So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Henry Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over a new sprite game. So today I'm going to be showing you exactly how I have created a game in Sprite Kit called Apple Picking. And so essentially the point of Apple Picking is quite self-explanatory really. Uh, it's just uh, lots of apples are falling from the sky and you have to move around a little player in the shape of a star uh, to actually go and collect those apples and then your score can increase. However, there's a little bit of a twist. There are also bad apples and good apples and normal apples. Normal apples just add one to your score. Good apples add three to your score and bad apples remove three from your score. Now, just before I continue, if you don't know what Sprite Kit is, which is the uh, essentially game SDK or graphics SDK that we're going to be using to develop this project, uh, it's essentially a 2D uh, sort of SDK or API actually that would be a or framework in Swift and Objective-C that Apple enables us to use in order to do stuff like simple animation. Uh, if you want sort of 3D or more complex animation I'd either go with Scene Kit or Metal. However, Sprite Kit does the job for apple picking. So, uh, I'm going to be going over to the Mac part now in which I will explain it, but just before I go, I'm just going to explain the basic concept uh, of the game on the whiteboard, then we'll move over to the Mac part in which I'll explain the actual app's code. Okay, so to begin, this is essentially a little um, graphic demonstration of how um, Apple picking works. Let's say your device is in landscape, which is exactly how this game is intended to be played. All right, and so basically in the center, we're going to draw a little line Okay, then from there we're going to calculate another line a few pixels off over here, and also over here, and over here, and over here. So in total, we want five lines, all of equal height, of course. Okay, coming down from the top to the bottom, towards the bottom, ending over right about here, though. Okay, and so these will take up almost to the, to the entire screen. I mean, there'll be a home button over here and stuff. Uh, however, then there's a little player in the shape of a star. But since I can't literally draw a star, uh, we're just going to go with a triangle for now. Okay. And so basically, the user will, uh, let's say the user clicks over here. We will not move the triangle over to this point. All we're going to do is we're going to move the triangle's x value to the touches x value. And if the user starts moving their finger around the screen like this, whatever the current position of their finger is, which is each one of these little pixels, ignore the y value and we're going to take the x value and set that to the, uh, and then we're going to set this object's x value uh, to the x value of your finger. And so essentially this triangle will follow you around. And also there will be a timer spawning an apple at random intervals uh, and uh, they're completely random whether it's a normal apple, a good apple, or a bad apple. And so basically apples will spawn on either one of these columns randomly completely uh, and then once one sort of spawns, let's just say an apple has spawned over here, it's just going to slowly start moving, or actually quite uh, semi-fast, start moving down, and then your objective is to let this triangle touch the apple, meaning you've picked it, or star actually. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, if you touch a bad apple, of course, your score will be uh, made less by three. If you go get a good apple, plus three, and the normal apple, plus one. Your score is also displayed over here, so let's just say our score is 33 right now. It's going to display 33 in the middle. And that's exactly how this app will work. Okay, so that was a simple explanation of how this app actually works. Hope you enjoyed that. However, now, first of all, I'm going to be showing you a demo of the app itself. Then I'll be showing you the actual Mac part, including the code and, yeah, just the code and an explanation of it. So, let's get to the demo and Mac part now. So, welcome back to the Mac part, and now I'm going to be showing you, actually, technically, it's the demo part. So, now I'm going to be showing you the demo of the app, then we'll switch over uh, to the actual app's code itself. So, let's begin, uh, and as you can see, I'm going to click on the Apple Picking app that's on my screen right now. It doesn't exactly have a logo, but again, none of my apps do that I share on this YouTube channel. But I'm going to click on it, and as you can see, we have a little star. Uh, a score indicator and lots of apples falling around. Uh, right as an apple touches the star, which is the player, uh, it disappears. So now I'm going to move my finger 
around and as you can see I am actually moving the star and I am touching all the apples uh, that I get inside my site. And as you can see, we also have these sort of uh, bars over here uh, that indicate these little columns of where the apples are actually spawning. Uh, and so, yeah, that's going to be the demo part. As you can see, these are good apples. These are golden. Uh, and so that's going to be it for the demo part. I hope you enjoyed. Now we're going to be moving over to the Mac part, which I will explain the code. And that's going to be it for the demo part. Let's move over to the Mac part now. So welcome back to the Mac part, and now I'm going to be showing you the code in depth. So let's begin, uh, but not first with the code. First, I'm going to be showing you the assets that we are using in this app. So to begin, as you can see, uh, oh, by the way, all these graphics will be available for download in the description below. Okay, so as you can see, this is the Apple graphic. It's just a normal red apple. Uh, next, we have the bad Apple graphic, which is a black grayish, actually, apple. Next, we have a good apple, which is just the normal apple with, instead of red, golden. That's nice. And then we also have the player, uh, which is just a star, and also V-line, which appears like nothing, but if you really zoom in, uh, I don't know how I would do that. I don't think it allows you to know, but it's a really thin, like, one-pixel line that we do use to create uh, the columns. Okay, continuing now. Now let's get into the code. And since Sprite Kit apps don't really have a UI that you can develop with a storyboard file, I'm just going to be explaining the code to you. Luckily, there's no user interface to de just dive right into. Okay, let's start with the code. This is weird because I haven't done uh, explaining code, uh, just code, like a playground in quite some time, uh, because usually the apps have a UI. Again, I'm going to stress this, every single object that you put onto the screen with Sprite Kit, you have to do programmatically. Continuing though, okay, so as you can see, this is our main class called Class Game Scene, which inherits from SK Scene, which uh, I do believe is, um, uh, yes, it, this is a class. I remember in, uh, what, it's, uh, it's not a protocol, it's a class, okay? Uh, and so basically, uh, this is sort of where uh, all of your game logic and all of your graphics are just going to be shoved into. Uh, and so this is essentially the hub of where all your other classes will connect. If you have a Apple class or if you have a another class, basically um, where all of the other classes that you've combined will merge into uh, and then we'll be able to create one functioning app. Okay, continuing. Now, as you can see, well, I just have some variable declarations over here, and now I'm going to explain these to you. So first of all, player is the actual SK sprite node for the star, okay? Uh, and so that's the star. Next, we have the node, which is an SK sprite node for the actual, you know, middle column. If I run this on a simulator really quick, on iPhone 6S Plus, I assume, a window... I'm just going to move this right to make this landscape. All right, and as you can see, this is node, this middle column here. Um, and so I'll explain more about that later. Okay, as you can see, we also have node right. And so this is one node to the right of node itself, which is this over here. Then we have node right B, which is one right to node right, so over here. Again, we're just actually creating the middle uh, middle little column, sorry, uh, middle column. Uh, and then the, the, the other ones are just being calculated from there. Then we have node left, which is the left column. And then node left B, which is the uh, column to the left of the left column. Okay, so now I'm going to close this down because we're done with those explanations. So those are all the nodes that are actually those little columns on screen. The reason I have this here was mainly for a debugging purpose to see exactly where the, uh, um, what do you call them, apples are going to be spawning, but, you know, I just kept them in because why not? Uh, and so continuing now, then we actually have an apples array, which is all the apples currently on screen, which is an array of class apple, which if you were wondering is literally just 
SK Sprite node and it inherits from the SK Sprite node class over here. However, it has one variable called type, which is equal to zero. Uh, the reason I had to create an entire new class for this is because Congrats, Apple. Uh, there are no, you cannot add variables to extensions, which is great. Uh, and so, continuing though, uh, you can't add variables to extensions. Uh, and so, uh, I just added a variable to a class called Apple, which inherits from SK Sprite Node. Great. That's a perfect uh, workaround, I guess. But continuing, uh, then we have a variable called spawn timer, which is just a normal NS timer, and sort of uh, this will take care of when we need to spawn another apple. Then we have our player score, which is just the score of the player, which can be, I think, the bounds of a normal int in Swift uh, are negative 8 million something and positive 8 million something, so anywhere in between that. But I doubt you're even going to get to a, uh, to a thousand, but continuing. Uh, then we also have a score label, which is just a constant, uh, and this is equal to a new SK label node with a font named Arial. Okay, so then what we're doing is in the beginning I'm setting the scene's background color to white color from UI color. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm taking the score label and I'm setting its font size to 100 over here. Okay, so this will make the score label really big. Then I'm setting its font color to black, and I'm setting its position to self.frame.midx and mid y. So essentially that really centers it into the middle. And then I'm just uh, calling self.addchild on score label, uh, and so essentially this will allow uh, us to actually put score label on the scene. Next what I'm doing is I'm saying spawn timer is equal to a new NS timer, uh, which is a scheduled timer for interval, uh, with time interval actually, I think they changed that, with 0 0.7, so it's going to actually spawn an apple every 0 0.7 seconds. It's going to call self. The function it's going to call is spawn apple, which I'll explain to you in just a moment. And then it's going to give no parameters to the function, meaning no user info, and I'm going to make sure it repeats. Now it's telling me that there, uh, it's deprecated uh, the uh, quote sort of Objective-C selector. So let's just try out um, the hashtag, uh, or I mean hash selector method. Okay, so let's see if this works. Spawn apple. Does this work? Okay. Um, I'm assuming we could just call this then. Okay, great. Let's just run that really quick uh, and see what we have. Great, so it's working. Uh, so, that was that. Okay, so I've just updated the code a bit, uh, and so I have uh, fixed the warning that it was giving. Anyway, continuing, then we're just setting our apples array to a blank array instead of a uh, nil array, so we can actually append objects to it. And then this is where we do sort of like the meat or juice of the actual calculations. So, 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 so basically, first of all, uh, I'm taking the node and setting it, setting it to a new SK sprite node with image name V-line, meaning vertical line, uh, which you just saw in the assets. Then I'm setting its size to 5 width, meaning 5 pixels width, and 300 hood pixels height. Then I'm setting its position to self.frame.midx, so it gets uh, centered in the x axis. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I am uh, setting the y um, parameter to self.frame.maxy, meaning the extreme top, minus node.frame.height divided by 2. And so essentially this will bring the entire frame uh, on, I mean the entire node down and so the beginning of the node just touches the top of the scene. Then I'm just adding node as a child to the scene. Then I am setting node right to pretty much the same SK sprite node, setting the same size, and this time I'm setting, I'm setting it to the same Y parameter. Instead, what I'm just doing is I'm saying self.frame.midx plus 200. Uh, and so that's where we're saying midx plus 200. Uh, and then for node left, I'm saying uh, minus 200. Uh, and then basically for node right b plus 400, and then node left b minus 400 for the x parameter. That's that. Uh, and then of course we add those as childs to the actual scene. Then I declare player as a new SK sprite node with the image named player that I created. 
Uh, then I'm setting player size to 50-50. The default, I guess, uh, and then we're setting its position to self dot frame the mid x, so the middle x axis, uh, and then 125, meaning uh, 125 in the y direction. I guess that works. Um, that's that. Continuing, uh, then we're actually adding that as a child to the scene. Next, as you can see, I have this little function over here called random number from. Now, this is not mine. It's actually from this gist over here, made by Indra Gek. I I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, uh, but uh, this person, uh, this. Uh, person actually on his github page has a random numbers dot swift uh, gist and it's really helpful uh, and so I'm using the random numbers fr uh, random number sorry not random number from uh, function from the gist in order to be able to generate random numbers continuing though Next, what I'm doing is I have a spawn apple function, which we've already talked about. This is what the timer uh, continuously calls. Now, in the spawn apple function, essentially what I'm doing is first of all, I'm declaring something called random position, which is equal to a new CG point. Then I'm going to say let pipe, which is those, which are those little columns, I guess. Uh, and I'm going to say random number from 1 to 5. There are 5 columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It'll choose any random number between them. Uh, and so what's going to happen is if pipe is equal to 1, then we want to choose the pipe in the exact center because that's the default node. Uh, and so I'm going to set the random position to node.position. If it's 2, then node right's position. If it's 3, then node left's position. If it's 4, then node right B's position. And if it's 5, then node left B's position. Okay, so now we've decided where exactly our apple will spawn. Then we're going to set the type of the apple to a random number from 1 to 6. Now I know there are only three types of apples, but I need to make it really rare for a good or bad apple to come. I want mainly normal apples to come. And so if it's 1, if, if the random number generated is 1, uh, then we'll do something. However, if it's 2, 3, 4, 5, or even 6, then we're going to execute something. So there's a 1 out of 6 chance that something will happen, but there's a 5 out of 6 chance that this will happen. And I'm going to tell you what these are in just a second. But the 5 out of 6 chance one is essentially, we're going to create something called an apple node, which is a new apple image named apple. Okay, so basically we're using the apple class that I mentioned over here, uh, on the bottom over here. Uh, and so since this inherits from SK sprite node, it inherits those initializers as well. Uh, and so I can just use the image named initializer from SK sprite node, uh, and we're using the normal Apple graphic from the assets. Then what I'm doing is I'm setting the Apple node's position to the random position that we have already chosen in the beginning of the function. Then I'm setting its size to a new CG size make 50-50. I am then setting the type to zero because it's a normal apple. I'm then adding the apple node as a child to this scene, and I'm, then I am appending it to the apples array. Now, let's say that the random number generated was one. Okay, then we're going to generate another random number in the type apple two variable. And so essentially, this uh, will be a random number from one to three. If it ends on 1, if it lands on 1, not 2 or 3, just 1, then we're going to do the exact same thing as we did for the normal apple, except this time the type will be 1 and the image name will be good apple. However, if it's 2 or 3, then we're going to do the exact same thing, except for the type will be negative 1, meaning bad, and then the image will be bad apple. That's that. Then we have uh, two functions over here that do the exact same thing. Uh, and so essentially, um, the touches began and touches move functions, uh, essentially we just say let touch is equal to touches dot first because that's a set for some reason. Uh, I mean, probably because if you want too many fingers to touch at once, you would see the x and y coordinates of each finger. But still, I, I would prefer one touch and then a separate function, whatever. But continuing, I went on a different topic there. So basically, uh, we declare let touch is equal to touches dot first. So the, basically, the first finger that you have on the screen uh, will be put into this variable. Then we're setting player positions x value to the touches location in node self dot x. So we're only setting the x value, not the y value. Then the exact same thing for touches moved because that literally just gives you coordinates of the person's uh, finger moving, just I guess a bit more live. 
Uh, then continuing in the update function, which in case you didn't know what this is, uh, this function is called whenever a frame is rendered. Uh, for example, if your frame rate is uh, 60 frames per second FPS, uh, then this is being called, this update function is being called 60 times every second because 60 frames are rendered each second. And so in this function, uh, since it's running rapidly, uh, we want apples to disappear, again, extremely rapidly, right as they touch the star. And so basically what I'm doing here is I'm doing all these sort of apple logic, if you will. Um, and so here I'm updating the user score label, I'm checking uh, w w where the star is and where all the other apples have they gone off screen? Should I remove them from the array? Should I say, yes, it's collided with the star, and now we should remove it? Stuff like that. And so basically, in the beginning here, I'm just saying var new apples is equal to a new array of apples, and I'm actually initializing it as well. And then I'm saying for i in apples, not new apples, just normal apples. Then I'm saying i.position.y, i is the specific apple that we're on, uh, minus equals 2, plus... And then we're checking if the type is a bad apple, then plus two. So make it go four down, meaning that the apple will bad apples will fall down faster. But if it's not a bad apple, it'll go zero, meaning normal speed. Then we're going to create a variable called should continue, which will be equal to true, uh, which is just essentially a little check to make sure that sorry the right uh, apples are removed and uh, the right apples stay at the correct times. Then what I'm doing is I'm checking if the apple's position, uh, specifically the y coordinate, is less than or equal to the min y of this frame, the minimum y coordinate. Uh, meaning if it's gone off screen, then should continue should be false. And also, if the uh, if basically this apple's frame intersects the player's frame, meaning they've collided or they've touched. Then we should set should continue to false. However, we should also set i's type to negative one, uh, and we should also mine. Uh, I mean, sorry, we shouldn't set i's type. We should check if i's type is negative one, and if it is, then we minus equals three from the player score, and then what we do is we check if the i's type is zero instead. If, if it wasn't negative 1. Then we'd plus equals 1 to the player score because that's a normal apple. However, if it's 1, this means it's a very good apple, and so we plus equals 3 to the player score. That's that. Finally, we check if we should continue. If we should continue to keep this apple in the array, then we say new apples out of pen, this uh, this i, or else we just say i dot remove from parent. We don't want to keep this as a node, and we definitely don't want it in the array, cluttering it up and filling up memory. And then basically we set apples to new apples, and so apples is gone from memory completely, and only the new apples are remaining, so we don't keep hundreds upon hundreds of apples on in memory. That doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? Uh, and then finally we're setting score label text to the player's score. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, again, if you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please make sure to leave it down below in the comments or email me at tagimany at gmail.com. You can also e uh, direct message me on Twitter at tagimany. Uh, you can also find this code on GitHub and there will also be a link in the description. Again, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel. It really helps out a lot. That's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.